pulsing. <clears throat> hello, hello. Welcome to today's lecture on advanced fluid dynamics. I'm your host, Dr. Juan Cepeda Rizzo, and we will be talking about our last day of class today, our last lecture. So right now we're waiting for folks to join. We're live streaming, but we're waiting for, still got a couple minutes to go. So here I'm quarantined in place, probably for the last time for this semester. We'll see how next semester goes. Um, no indication as to whether we will be doing any, I doubt we would be doing any live lectures in the fall. I don't know, that's my guess, but we don't know. We don't know, it's too early to tell. <clears throat> so, um, but it's okay, I'm set up. I got my whiteboard, got my markers, and uh, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go, okay. All right, so we're gonna wait for some people to still join in. It's uh, 6.59, we got our, our live stream starting around seven o'clock and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So we can get people to join. Hey, Mohammed, how are you? Hey, I got your message by the way, so of course, uh, yeah, we're we're good. I'll I'll um I'll get back to you on that. All right. Hope hope you're doing well. How are things? Yeah. So uh, today's our last lecture. Good. Yeah. So do you, you got any plans for the for the summer? Just a second, I'm gonna do something to make sure that this connection doesn't lag. Let me see, I'm gonna give myself priority on the Google Wi-Fi. So, let's see. All right. Oh, you're taking two classes in the summer. All right. Wow, there's, that's gonna be intense. Or you won't get to relax much in the summer because the semester goes by. The classes are, oh, uh, CE. Are you a civil engineer? CE 2406, based on that. Um, Let's see. All right, we got five people. Okay, mechanical engineering. What is a CE 406, if you don't mind me asking? Okay, so uh, you guys can see the board, hopefully. It's, uh, it says, welcome to our last, if you can't see it, I apologize, welcome to our last lecture of ME 537. Cost analysis, ooh, fun. <laughs> I'm not much of a cost person, but you know, that's so important. Uh, our projects for, for, especially for large projects is the ability to manage costs. Oh, you have to take the class, okay. But it's still a good class. I mean, I haven't taken the class, but I mean, in terms of finance and, and anything to do with cost analysis, it's gonna make you a better engineer. And that's, a, that's an area I avoided, um, but it's definitely, you have to look at all that. And everything is about making money or about at least trying to break even. All right, thank you, Mohammed. So uh, we're gonna start the class now. So uh, really right now, I'm leaving it up to you guys. Right now we have a, the only way we're able to communicate is through a chat. So um, I want you guys to go ahead and and send me any questions that you have. Just to recap, today I believe that the final is due by midnight, by 11.59 p.m. 
And uh, that means basically the last two homework sets, if you remember that you have to do, and then I will give you, I'll base your final grade on those. And that's um, the one homework was set, many of you turned in one or two weeks ago. And then the last one is the one that's also due today, I believe. So if for some reason you guys can't hit that deadline, let me know, because uh, Dropbox doesn't receive any more uh, you know, assignments after 11.59. So if you have any ex any circumstances, just so you know, I'm, I'm willing to, to, be, to be open to that. Um, so just so you know, your final exam is due by midnight tonight. Okay, and so you got any questions on that? You maybe look at the last video that we did and go back to the news clips that we I've been posting on Beachboard and that'll clear up everything. So um, we got nine people. Um, typically we get go anywhere between 11 to 13 people. So this is kind of a quorum. We started already. Okay, so what we're gonna, so I mentioned final exams due tonight. And um, our finals actually, we have a scheduled final, but we're not we're not going to be participating in it. So all you have is basically on the day of your final, which is next Thursday, you have your project due. So what I wanted to talk about today, if no one else has any other questions, is the project. All right. So we have this project that is out there, and that's twenty percent of your grade. And uh, I want you to use. Hopefully, you had enough time to to work on it and if not you got till you got a week a week and about four hours before it's due because it's due next thursday at 11 59 p.m according to dropbox so um i'll be looking forward to those projects i already have been having some emails uh students have been emailing emailing me questions um so what i want you to do first of all if you're if you're uh you want any supplemental information on the project? I just posted just right now. I posted an Excel spreadsheet, and it literally took me about twenty minutes to half an hour to put together as to, as how a, someone can approach the uh, solving this pro this problem without using CFD analysis, any fancy tools, but but Excel. Basically, you don't even need Excel; you can do it by hand. But Excel is nice because you can go and change values and and you can graph and you can do things for presentations and such. So uh, feel free to go to our beach board page or um, class site. And inside the project folder, you'll find an Excel spreadsheet called Sterilizer. And I went ahead and I'll show you basically the steps that I did on solving the problem. But it, there were some very high level assumptions that I made. So in other words, I didn't really even go into math too much into the the math behind how do you really determine if you know if this thing's going to work or not? Are we going to be able to sterilize the air? Are we gonna, how much power is required to bring the air up to 100 degrees and then bring it back down to something that that we can breathe? So um, you know, it's it's basically just makes large assumptions, but it's a way of being able to show you how, how a calculation can be done. All right. So let me go ahead and start that. What's uh, 706? Let me see before I start. Um, again, for those of you guys that, that we got 12 people for that have come in a little late, we have, I, th I believe the final is due today. So that means you're, you remember the final, what, what the assignment was, and we were clear on that. I think I assigned it, uh, if not last week, the week before. And so um, we should be clear, and that's due tonight. So if you're not clear about that, you might want to go to our Beachboard website, look at the news clips, look at the last recording that we did, the, the YouTube live stream, I went into depth onto that. So um, again, that's due tonight at 12, so or 11.59 p.m. So make sure you do that assignment. Hope you guys are all, yeah, what's, um, so we have, Mohammed, what's your question about the project? Um, we have a little lag right now. So I, what I did is I gave myself priority on the, on our router. So now um, we shouldn't have any slow ups. Okay, so um, Mohammed's question, if I didn't use SolidWorks, okay. That's, that's okay. I don't know if there's more to that question, but you don't have to use anything really. Uh, you guys might've seen I posted videos on how 
I set up the problem on SolidWorks. Now, uh, I have to apologize those videos. What I do is I use Microsoft 10, uh, it's called Game Bar, and it's basically, it's a program that's set up to basically capture your gaming. If you're playing the game, you can do screen capturing. Um, and uh, I noticed that Game Bar, for some reason, when I open up Windows, so in other words, I'm doing something, and if I open up a, a sub menu or another window, like a pop-up window, it doesn't record it. So it almost looks like I'm just kind of pointing around the, the model saying, yeah, I'm this and do that and do this, but I'm opening up windows. And so I really apologize about that. I don't know, really, it's too late to kind of go back and try to fix it. Next time I'm gonna try a different software. Maybe I'll have to um, pro project it and then record it so that I know it's not, you know, that it's everything is visible. All right, so you don't have to use SOLIDWORKS. Um, you can use, again, I'm gonna go over another way of, of solving this using Excel. It's probably, for those of you that don't wanna mess around with any software, it's probably the best way to do it. Uh, Sasan, hi professor, I did a back of the napkin calculation using the flow over a hot plate uh, for the project to estimate heat over, okay, good. Uh, assume steady, yes, and compressible, no entry, no entry region. When I run the numbers for our prescribed flow rate on a one inch by six inch channel, I get a Reynolds number around 700, leads the way very low H. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, when you use the Reynolds number, you have to assume a, a velocity. It's a very low, low velocity. However, we are dealing with, with air, and air has a... Um, a very low viscosity compared to, to water, for example. So when you do the Reynolds number, right, you have the Reynolds, let me see if any of these pens work. The Reynolds number is equal to, um, is equal to velocity times the diameter um, or velocity times length divided by the, um, the um, dynamic or the, the kinematic viscosity. So that's one way of writing, or, or basically rho v l over the dynamic viscosity. And so the values that make the Reynolds number low would be either a very large, um, a very large viscosity. Very large viscosity would lower the Reynolds number, or a very low velocity. The thing is, we have a uh, very low velocity, but we have also a very low viscosity. So uh, you might want to check those numbers. Um, it doesn't really ma matter too much. You can go ahead and do with the laminar assumption. Now, if this was equal to, if this was equal to 700, again, there's no units in Reynolds number, then absolutely this is laminar flow. So um, if it is laminar flow, then in order to find the H, which is the, Heat transfer coefficient, the units of the heat transfer coefficient are watts per meter square Kelvin. Kelvin or degree C, doesn't matter. Um, there's a different set of laminar flow assumptions. Um, usually you're gonna get lower H's, right? So the heat transfer coefficient is how much heat, how much heat in watts can we transfer across an, a, a unit area per degree C or per degree Kelvin? And so uh, the larger the heat transfer coefficient, the more heat you're gonna be able to transfer, the less heat you need to actually uh, put into the air. In other words, you'll be more efficient anyway. You'll be able to transfer more heat into the air. Um, and I mentioned there's different things that can affect this. Usually what you do is you, you uh, solve uh, for something called the Nusselt number. And the Nusselt number, I believe is HD over, K, and so you the Nusselt number really is the number that you can go in. I posted in um, I posted into our beach board some slides on heat transfer. Now this isn't a heat transfer class. This is fluid dynamics. However, we did have a tree heat transfer element to it at the very end in the syllabus. We said we'd be talking about uh, flows as they affect heat transfer. And so in there, you can actually find lists of Nusselt numbers depending on what kind of a flow, right? Do you have do you have flow going over a pin grid, kind of like what we're doing here? Do you have flow going through a pipe? Do you have cross flow of a pipe going through a pipe where there's another flow 
on the outside of the pipe crossing the other way. So um, anyway, the, if you want to get fancy and 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 I, I want you to be able to determine this is important here. What kind of a heat transfer coefficient we can be using if you're doing this by hand. So if you're doing this by hand, then uh, then you need to be able to determine what kind of a heat transfer coefficient. So let me catch up to some of the questions here. So uh, Sasson says I calculated from the Nussel number. Okay, good. And that I mean that looks like a good equation over a flat plate. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Sasson. Um, now, for uh, when you get the actual heat transfer, you need to determine what kind of area. And if it's a flat plate, then it's basically all this is is basically just it's going over a a like a one inch by one or two inch or something area, three sections of it. Um, what what I had in the models were extruded surfaces, so it's actually going to multiply the area by two or three times or whatever it is. I I, I don't remember the calculation there. And so uh, you may have the same heat transfer coefficient, but a larger area, therefore you have a, a larger amount of heat you're going to be able to transfer. So um, if you guys have any questions, post them, and I'll, I'll try to get, get to them, but I'm going to start kind of start lecturing right here. So some of this is, is uh, I mean, it's going to be answered by the lecture. So uh, let me go ahead and erase some of this. All right, so let me go ahead. First of all, for those of you guys that came in a little later, um, we have 15 students online. Um, so if you go to Beachboard and if you go to our project folder, I, I just, uh, an hour and a half ago, I put, um, and I sent the, I actually sent that file to a few people that asked me for some help. Um, there is basically my Excel spreadsheet is, is, uh, is in there in the project folder and it's called the, the file's called sterilizer. It's the only Excel spreadsheet in that folder. So, um, so in there, I'm going to show you how I, basically solve this. It took me about half an hour to set up the spreadsheet. And by all means, it's not, it's a very high level way of doing it. And uh, it doesn't have any of these calculations like Sasan has done. It basically has just assumptions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, um, basically bear with me for a second. I'm looking at it right now as we speak. So I might have to refer to it here and there. All right, so, um, so what, what I do is I came up with, let's assume, so we have a pipe, all right? And if you remember, I'm gonna draw up here and see if, the, if it comes up. Remember, this is a three-dimensional pipe. If you looked at the actual geometry or if you look at the presentations that I posted, it has, so there's, there's a separation there. There's a top part and it's, it's hollow. Maybe I shouldn't shade it in. So this is a, this is actually a bar that separates the top from the bottom. So this is the inlet. So air goes in here and it comes out here. So basically it comes in here and it comes out that way. All right. And so in here, when the air comes in, so this goes out again, when it comes out, it's supposed to go to some kind of a, you know, a breathing tube or something like that, that you would wear a mask, you know, like this. And, you know, I don't know if you'd wear goggles and stuff like that, but anyway, you would take the air in like that. So, but, but that's the, the air that comes into the, to the person breathing. And the idea is that we want to take the air to a hundred degrees if we can, right? Somewhere inside this tube. And then we got to cool it down so that we're not breathing a hundred degree air. Right. So um, let me make sure I stay on top of the questions if they come in. So by, we do this by doing, um, we have these things called thermoelectric coolers. Now you don't really have to get into the thermoelectric cooler part of it. Just know that it's a device that basically heats the top. There's heat at the top. So the air that's coming in, it's heating it up. So it does this. There's three of them. And they're inside the, um, they're inside the tube at the top section where the air is coming in and they're heating up the air. And then at the bottom, the opposite side of that, of the thermoelectric cooler, it absorbs heat. So it, so here you got Q, let me just say Q is hot. So Q is positive.
There is a positive Q at the top and at the bottom there's a negative Q. And what it's doing is there's a, there's a cooling element at the bottom and that's absorbing the heat. Now these traditionally, these thermoelectric coolers usually have more heat at the top and less cooling at the bottom by a factor of two. So in other words, if, if there's, let's say there's hundred Watts coming from this element and then heating up the air, then there's only 50 Watts of, of heat lift of negative heat. In other words, of cooling. So the way you, um, and you don't have to really, you don't have to get into this detail, but I'm just telling you, the way you can balance that is to, at, at, the, at the top, attach some, some fans, some rotary fans with, with, that are attached to the, to the plate, to the extruded surface. And then what you can do is you can, instead of using all the heat to heat up the air, you, some of it you, you just send out to the atmosphere. Now there's a way of doing that. You have to do this in a sealed way so you don't introduce fresh air. You don't, you know, there's, there's only, this has got to be, what we call hermetic. In other words, the only air that can come in is through here. And the only air that can come out is through here. We don't want any air coming in from the outside, some leakages or else what's the point, right? So uh, this can be done through conduction. Anyways, if you look at the presentation, you can bleed off some of the air here so that you can balance the two. You can, instead of, if this produces a hundred Watts, maybe you only use 50 Watts of it for heating up the air and 50 Watts you throw away. And then now you have 50 Watts of cooling so it's a way of balancing out the two. All right. So uh, anyway, so what you got is the air comes in like this. And then it starts to heat up. Actually, I should, I should put it in red. The air is heating up. It makes a, a U-turn here. And it goes down to the, the second partition. And then the air starts to cool down as it goes out. And finally, it comes out cold. All right. So that's the idea. Now, how do we set up in this in terms of a calculation? So let's go ahead and do that here on this diagram here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put three hot plates representing the top surface of this thermoelectric cooler. Now this thermoelectric cooler looks, let me see if I can, I just gotta see there's, there's glare on the window. Um, the thermoelectric cooler is essentially like a sandwich. It's made out of these elements, these ceramic elements and again once it gets hot and it releases heat once it gets cold and it absorbs heat and so again what we want to do is we want to heat up the air and on the way back to the person that's going to breathe it, it's going to cool it down and um, so instead of, I'm gonna diagram this out as, as uh, let me see if I can, ex let's see if that's coming out on the video there. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so instead, um, instead of doing a U-turn, just to illustrate what's going on, and if you go look at the packet, the, uh, the file that I put into Beachboard, you'll see this. Let's assume that you have, it's just going in one way. You have a very long tube and the first, the first three elements heat up the air and I'll just put like this. And the last three elements cool down the air. Maybe I'll put that in green. So um, we're gonna assume, for right now we're gonna assume because I've, I've worked with these thermoelectric coolers, and I actually have some that I can hook up to a battery, and it's just like a, it's like a 10 volt battery. Um, it's a battery for running remote, those, those uh, remote control racing cars, so those little RC cars. And I can actually run these elements for about two hours. And, um, and again, I slapped the, the nickel cadmium, or actually it's a, a nickel metal ion, um, battery, and then I can run this for two hours. And what I do is, is uh, I'm going to assume 10 watts. So I'm going to say plus 10 watts, plus 10 watts, plus 10 watts for the first three elements. All right. And then for the next three, I'm going to say, as it comes around the ba bottom side, I'm going to say minus uh, 10 watts, minus 10 watts, and minus 10 watts. 
So what happens is, let's assume you have air and it's coming in. This is my T in temperature as it goes in. And then it's gonna go all the way through and come out here. And I'm gonna say, this is my TO temperature out. So there's T in and then TO. And then what I do is I say, well, what's the air as it heats up? I wanna be able to measure what the temperature is. So here I'm gonna say, at this point here, I'm gonna call that T1, I'm gonna call that T2. I'm gonna call this T3 and I'm gonna call this T4 and then this one T5. So I'm setting up like a, if you include the nodes up here, this is about a five, six, seven node model. Um, it's not even that fancy actually. So uh, let me see. All right, so, and now I wanna be able to measure, this is air coming in. Now, um, if you look at the, uh, the presentation, so um, we don't have, so this is the assumption I'm gonna do. All right, I wanna be able to measure, to calculate how much, how hot the air is getting. This, well, it's hot, this should be at its hottest point, T3, so I'm gonna underline this with red. And I'm gonna, I wanna know what T3 is. And T3 has gotta be, uh, greater than or equal to 100 degrees C for me to be successful, all right? Because I wanna sterilize the air. So again, all right, so we have the whole COVID-19 thing going on, right? And now COVID-19 is not the uh, avian flu virus or it was the swine flu, which was, so if you can imagine, you know, God forbid, but if the COVID-19 ever become like an airborne type of virus, where it actually went into the air, then there's really all this social distancing stuff is, is not going to help us, you know, because it can it actually fly over your neighbor's yard or their wall and go right right to you um, because of the, you know, it's a very, viruses are very small. And if you remember from our, our low Reynolds number uh, lecture, the smaller the size, the Reynolds number and the more lift and the air becomes almost acts like water, right? It's like us swimming in water for viruses going through the air is like us swimming in water. And we have, there's more buoyancy, there's the ability to travel and to stay afloat. So um, so the idea here was if, if anything like that happened, you might want to, you know, find a way to stay healthy, right? One of the ways is basically put on a mask, but a mask that heats up the air to a sterilizing temperature and it, but cools it back down so that you can breathe, um, so you're not breathing hot air, right? So, so I wanna know how hot it gets, and on the way out, I wanna know, this should be, this is what I'm gonna breathe. This is what's gonna go into my mask. So this should be, uh, T0 should be at least, no no less than, no uh, no more than, I don't know, what, what's a good number? 40 degrees, I think 40 degrees C might even be too hot. But let's just say it's 40 degrees C. And in reality, if we're using, if, you know, just doing, conservation of energy, if we're heating something up by 30 watts and then we're cooling it down by 30 watts, it should actually, the temperature should be what the inlet was, right? But um, anyway, so we should be fine with that. And the, the, the inlet is just basically what it is, you know, you can assume whatever temperature you want, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. So I'm just saying 40 degrees is probably already, you know, you don't want to breathe more than hotter than that. You're going to get too hot. You might get uh, heat exhaustion and all that. All right. So how do I get these temperatures? Well, the way I get these temperatures is, I'm gonna write this over here, I think you guys can see this, is I use my um, forest convection equation. And when my forest convection equation, I'm gonna say little q is equal to my heat transfer coefficient times the area times the change in temperature that goes over the, uh, this, the surface in general and uh, in question. So we're going to do this for six different uh, for six different platelets, for example. So this is going to be the temperature. It's the temperature that it. So the air comes in here. So it's this temperature minus the incoming air. So it would be in this case it would be. Let's just say um, T1 minus T initial. 
All right. So I don't care about Q. I have Q, right? Q is 10 watts at each plate and negative 10 watts at each heating plate is positive 10 watts and negative 10 watts at each cooling plate. So I want, I want to solve for all these T1 through T5. So I really want to solve for T1. So then you just set this up in terms of, uh, of you know, solving for T, T1. So um, let me just make sure I'm doing this the right way. And so, um, <clears throat> okay. So then we have, we're gonna say we're solve for T1 is equal to Q, Q over HA. So we divide both sides by HA and then you're gonna have a negative TI on that side. So then you basically put plus TI. So T1 is gonna be TI, the, in, the air coming in, plus the temperature rise caused by the 10 watts across that area. All right, and so that's, and so then, then you can find what's, what. then you're gonna use TI, T1 now is gonna help you to find T2. So now you say T2 is equal to Q over HA plus T1. And then, and so forth and so on. And I'm gonna say T3 is equal to Q H A plus T2. And then finally at the very end, you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna solve for T4. And at the very end, you're gonna say uh, T out is equal to Q over H A plus T5. And so the ones, the key ones that you wanna read are T3 and then T naught, because those are the, these are the ones that you wanna be able to assess, am I okay, did I solve the problem? All right, so then it's real simple. You, can, you don't need an Excel spreadsheet, you can do this by hand, right? And here's uh, the, the, the large caveat. So in, in my spreadsheet, I assumed, let's see, I'm just making sure I can, you guys can read what I, I write. I assume H is equal to 100 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now, Sasson did it the right way. He went and used, and you guys can look at the comments right here. He basically found the Nussel, the Nussel number, right? Because I mentioned before, Nussel, and I hope I got this right, is, e is the Nussel number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient times the length that it's traveling over divided by the thermal conductivity of the fluid. <clears throat> and so then you can solve, you can solve for the heat transfer coefficient if you know the Nussel number. So it's just the Nussel number times K divided by L. All right. And so that's the right way of doing this. And actually, this is what I assumed. And I know it's high. Okay, I know it's probably too high. And if it's laminar flow, which uh, Sasson mentioned, and I, honestly, I don't remember if it is or not. Uh, I did a, something, a similar project for, uh, for my dissertation on a different application and I, I didn't use air. I use a, um, a dielectric liquid. So it's basically a liquid, it's like a fluorinated cooling fluid. And I think I was in the laminar region. And I'm pretty sure I use a similar flow rate to, to how we breathe in. Um, I think breathing is somewhere between one and to one and a half or 0.6 liters per minute to 1.2 liters per minute is kind of the flow rate of breathing in. So um, I, I'm pretty sure I was in, in turbulence. And it, um, again, if you're doing a plate, maybe that's different than if you're doing a pin grid or an extruded surface, that kind of thing. So uh, regardless, it doesn't matter. Whatever you got, you can get. Which if you, if you have laminar flow, and um, then you might need more power, right? In order to make sure that the air heats up because turbulent flow has a better heat transfer coefficient than laminar flow in general. All right, so this is how I did it. This was my big assumption. I'm trying to think of what else do I, do I assume. An area, I mean, you can get it off the model. Um, or you can kind of just just eyeball it. You know, it's it's like this. What is that, right? Like an inch and a half, two inches by two inches. That's what a thermoelectric cooler is. I actually have some in my, uh, I should have brought some out. But you get to pick whatever else you want for the area here. You get to pick the, and, and what I did is I had an extruded area. 
So I had these heat sinks that were connected on top of the thermoelectric cooler. So I had a uh, pin grid, basically like extruded um, uh, area here, surfaces. You know what I mean by, by extruded surfaces? You guys know what a heat sink is? It's basically, instead of using a flat plate, you have uh, pins which extrude the area, which cause the area to be larger. And so, um, and so therefore, when you do this calculation, you have um, a larger area. So, um, is that right? So H A. So the heat. Yeah. So anyway, so the area is larger. You're able to to heat up the air a little bit better because you got more more area uh, that you're spreading the heat over. All right. So Sasson says, if we do calculate a laminar flow, we should we should be able to assume there is a mesh or something at the mouth of the tube that causes it to be turbulent. Sure, you can do that too. Maybe that's a good way of of so you maybe like you said, there is there 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 should be something here. There might be something that, or actually maybe there is there is the tube is is a little bit long before you start getting to the heat. And it starts to, uh, it goes from laminar and then it goes to transition and it goes to turbulence. I'm, this project is up to you guys, how you guys want to solve this. Um, so the Excel spreadsheet that I did, that's basic, all right? So if you guys, you know, not to be mean, but I want you guys to use that as a guide. But if you send it back to me with my own Excel spreadsheet, um, the best I'll give you is probably like a B, all right? So, um because that, if you use my my own assumption of 100 watts, so I so I just basically pulled that out of the air. Um, what 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 I would like you to do is do like what Sasan did, is and derive H. And all you have to do, I mean, go back into the lectures that I did on heat transfer. There's some documents that I put into Beachboard on heat transfer on convective heat transfer, and how to calculate Nusselt numbers. There's there's um, you can just go online. How do you calculate? Find the Nusselt number for flow over a, a pin grid array or extruded surface or something. Even a, even a flat plate is fine. But if you can kind of just try to estimate what the real tr heat transfer is coefficient instead of just now. If you went ahead and say, "Well, professor, you have a hundred. That's actually, you know, research has shown it's more like fifty for the kind of you know." Then at least that's you looked into it a little bit, right? And you can just document. Um, but I want you to do a little bit more in order to get that A. I want you to to um, to just to have derived that that H a little bit differently than me. I just I just basically just put a number there, and um, and I was able to calculate the air heating, and I was able to determine that it took about yeah it took about 10 watts to get to 100 degrees. I got to about 97 degrees, and on the exit I got to like 30 something degrees, and so uh, and I assumed T inlet was 20 degrees. So, um, you know, then, then you can play around with things. You can say, well, what, what if you're in, uh, what if you're in Alaska and the temperature is, you know, everything in is, is cooler, right? Um, maybe there's restrictions, right? Maybe you say, well, this could only be used temperature in, in areas where the temperature is at least 20 degrees or I'm um, like 10 degrees Celsius or something. And it, you know, and then anyway, that's, so that's a high level as to what I want you guys to do. Um, so if, uh, all right. So again, I got the Excel. So for those of you, uh, now let me talk about the CFD program. Um, I didn't get to teach you CFD. I uh, basically put a video and the video I know is hard to follow. And the CFD program is a pain in, in the rear end. Um, it's SolidWorks. I love SolidWorks. It's free for you guys. So it's actually very powerful, um, but it's not that, it's not that simple, you know. It's it's um it's about as simple as it gets. Let me tell you though, in terms of all the CFD programs out there, and I don't know Sasan if he, I think he likes Ansys, and I think that's a good program too. Um, but SolidWorks flow simulation is about as easy it's is it's as it's going to get to do a flow analysis. Most of the other mainstream programs are are um are harder to use. Uh, this one is very very straightforward. There's this thing called the wizard and you just, it's really simple. You just go in there and just answer the questions. The wizard, the wizard saying, what kind of fluid is this? What's the material of, of that, that you have here? Um, 
what's the um you know what's the pressure on the outlet is it atmospheric and even it'll assume atmospheric pressure which is what we what i did here when i ran it on the on the cfd program um it'll go it'll go through all the processes that it'll, it might ask you some advanced questions like is there is there a free surface or something there's uh, in terms of fluid dynamics talks, there is no free, free surface that we're dealing with. We're not talking about, uh, you know, a layer of liquid and another layer of liquid on top of that, and there's a free surface. We're just talking about just standard, um, st standard steady state flow. Um, you can even assume turbulence if you want at the beginning, or you can let it calculate. So the nice thing with the CFD program is that it'll, it'll do the CFD program will do this. All right. It'll calculate that for you. It'll calculate the heat transfer coefficient directly. You don't have to go into textbooks and you know and and look to see well what is this like? Is this like more like flow over a flat plate or because there's no data on flow over pin grids and um, you know and then so if you're doing this um, empirically, you'll have to go into books and you have to do research papers and you have to figure out. And this is actually this is big. This is the whole problem here. All right, if I knew this ahead of time, that it's exactly 100 watts per meter square Kelvin, then all I got to do is do a, a simple calculation and I'm there. Um, a lot of times we don't have that, so we want to do a flow analysis and it will give you the flow. Also, it will give you how um, what percentage of the air actually gets heated, right? Because what, what happens here, I'm assuming the way I did the geometry is the assumption here is 100% of the air gets heated, all right? So all the air, so all... All the, the the heat dissipation here is being absorbed by the air, and when it goes over the cold plates, all the uh, so 100% of the of the heat from the air is being absorbed back out. So, um, but what if you have in in your CFD, if you have all these spaces and gaps, then you might have air flow around here, right? What happens to that air, right? It kind of skips over the heat plates, and so um, and you can have what if your your flow is too fast, right? You can have a situation where your flow is too fast and it doesn't, the, the air doesn't have enough time to get heated. And so um, the CFD program will, will take care of all that for you, right? You, you just run it and it'll take care of all those questions. It'll, it'll tell you at the end, it'll say, well, you only, you don't have hundred percent heat transfer here. In other words, I'm not, the assumption here is all the air, all the heat is going into the air and all the heat that's being absorbed is right out of the air and there's nothing being wasted. And so the CFD program will be able to determine that for sure. It'll give you a, an efficiency. So my, my efficiency, my assumption for this right now is 100% efficient. But in reality, my geometry and all that may make it more like 50% 50, 50 efficient. And at that point, if 100 watts does the trick, maybe you need to, I'm sorry, if this does the trick, maybe you need 20 watts. You see what I'm saying? So that's where the CFD is invaluable. And that's, those are the things, um, so again, you only got a week left. If you haven't already done CFD, then don't worry about it. You know, just do do the hand calculation or do the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, but what I want you to do is be able to give me a good a good reason why you're using a certain heat transfer coefficient. Now, the heat transfer coefficient also may change, right? My assumption was constant throughout. That's a good assumption. They don't normally change. Um, Let's see, if we look at this equation here, the Nusselt number, so the heat transfer coefficient is equal to the Nusselt number times the thermal conductivity times the length. So we know the length of this geometry is not gonna change. Thermal conductivity of air does change with temperature, but it's very small for this. This is very small temp temperature changes. If we're going from 10 degrees to 1,000 degrees Celsius, then yeah, that's a very significant change in the conductivity is highly affected. Now, if we look at Sasson's calculation um, for, or his assumption for the Nusselt number, he assumed the Nusselt number was equal to, let me, if you, if you don't mind, Sasson, what I'm gonna do is 0.33. So you assume it's 0 0.332 times the Reynolds number to the one half times the Prandtl number to the one third. So times the Reynolds number, it's basically the square root of the Reynolds number times uh, the Prandtl number to the one over three. And so again, there's lots and lots and lots of different 
correlations. This is just one correlation that Sasan found in terms of a flow of a flat plate. Uh, you want, if you want to use this, uh, that's, that's okay with me. This is for laminar flow of a flat plate, if I, if I understand. Um, and then Sasan says, um, he says, Q will decrease when delta T decreases between the air and the hot plate. Yes, yes. So the, the amount of heat that you pick up when the temperature difference starts to decrease, then then the, the heat transfer decreases too. So yeah, th so there's a lot of moving parts here. Um, you don't have to use this. Again, that's one of the that's one of our students who who did a little bit of research. You could, and uh, that'll get you a better grade than if you just use my assumption here of 100 watts because I I didn't 100 watts per meter square because I just I just did that assumption pretty much. Um, you know, just a feel. Actually, 100 watts per meter square Kelvin is kind of high um, for the flow rates that we're looking at, but it's not that bad. It's actually not too bad of an assumption. But again, I want you to have some thought behind it instead of just kind of, well, professor said he put 100 watts per meter squared Kelvin on his, and I'm going to use that. and Give some, give some reason behind it. So San already is calculating it. He's calculating the Nusselt number, and then from there, he's going to calculate the heat transfer coefficient that he'll use in this kind of a situation. Though I don't know if he's using CFD. Um, again, if you already, haven't already started the CFD code, you may want to have this as a backup, but if you do CFD code, um, you know, you don't want to make sure, you want to make sure you have a backup, right? Because the way CFD works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. And you'll, you'll just stress yourself out. All right. So the, this, this is all captured in my spreadsheet that I put into our Beachport account in the uh, project folder. You guys have any questions at this point? Any other questions? Any questions in general about the project? Again, it's due in a week. Please look at our the news postings that I put. Um, it's due the day of the final, which is next week, I believe and it's due uh, at midnight. So it's actually 11.59 p.m. So don't think it's midnight and you're gonna submit, it's 11.59 and 30 seconds, it won't let you submit it. So um, try to get it in early. Um, I don't, no guarantee I'll, re I'll grade it early, you know me. I'm still trying to catch up with all the homework assignments and everything. Pretty much those homework assignments, as long as you just did a pretty good effort on it, I'm gonna give you full credit. So you don't have to worry about those homework assignments, as long as you did it and put a decent effort, you're going to get full credit. Um, this one is 20% of your grade. Again, if you just go ahead and do what I did here and you put in a heat transfer coefficient of 100 and you don't really give much information, the best you're going to get is about a, a B. Um, if you go and put some thought behind it and do a little bit more, um, a better approach or kind of a fine tuning that number, the heat transfer coefficient, and maybe some other assumptions, then um, you'll get a you'll you'll get a you'll get that A. All right, if that's what you guys want. Um, if you guys are looking for a B, I would just go ahead and use my spreadsheet and send it back to me. We're good, you know. So um, so okay. Any other questions? Any other questions in general on the course? I know there's some students out there that have asked me for things like letter recommendation or uh, other things and um, just uh, have patience with me. I, I definitely want to help you guys out. I'm, I, you know, I'm all for helping you guys out. So uh, feel free to, if you don't, if I told you I'm going to do something or if I didn't tell you, don't, don't, don't be afraid of, of re emailing me and say, Hey, you remember I asked you about this thing? What do you think? You haven't, you didn't respond. Sometimes I, uh, you know, I get busy too, and and you know how it goes. It's uh, it seems like working from home sometimes it's more work, you know, because uh, I don't know, maybe they're testing us to make sure we are working, and therefore they're giving us more work, or maybe they're thinking, well, you're, he's not on the road anymore, so he can actually do more work. So it's no less stress. All right, so okay, so I hope you guys are all doing well, you know, and and I I'm sorry that the class had to end this way, and. You know, we didn't really get to hang out and talk, and and uh, I know like John and Sam, um, you guys. I never got to go have a meal with you guys, and uh, I wish it could have been different. You know, was, no one saw this coming, I guess. 
but uh, maybe we'll see each other next semester sometime. All right. I don't know what I'm going to teach. Uh, I'm actually scheduled to teach this in a year. So if you guys wanted to take it again, by all means, <laughs> let me know in 2021. Um, but anyway, I'm just joking. All right. So if there's no other questions, then, uh, you, you, you know, it was a good class. I, and I enjoyed having you guys in, in my class and, uh, uh, stay safe out there. I know you keep hearing that, but, uh, you know, and we'll see what happens, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed and have a good, uh, so those of you guys are graduating, uh, graduating, have a good graduation. Um, you deserve it, you know, and it's kind of funny how it had to end, but, um, sometimes we can't predict things. And if not, if you guys are still, maybe I'll see you guys next semester. All right. I'm going to end it now. You got any other questions? Thanks, Tim Torres. Any other questions? Uh, thanks, uh, Mohammed. Appreciate it. And, uh, Sasan, um, you guys uh, keep safe too. And, uh, maybe go see you guys again soon. All right. All right. Uh, any other questions? Just uh, email me. All right. So you know, you know me, I'll, I'll respond to emails usually. Okay. Take care guys.